All right. The woman says we're recording in progress. All right. Hello, I'm Sakai. And um, today we've got uh, Matthew Johnson, who's going to speak to us about pedal drives for boats, particularly his boat. And um, so thanks for joining us, Matthew. And um, I'm glad that I could participate. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, once this is all done, I'm going to post it to a YouTube channel that's called Sockeye Voyages. That again doesn't have a lot on it. So you are the the first person. What I hope to be uh, many um, of these where we share maritime knowledge and skills and interviews with interesting people. So um, Matthew, uh, before you show us your boat, uh, can you tell us why you've gotten into pedal drive for boats? What's your background? Uh, my background is a cyclist. Um, I started racing when I was quite young uh, and raced on a professional level. Um, uh, that was uh, many lifetimes ago. And uh, just I got tired of being out on the road uh, with cars and I wanted to get out and pedal with uh, being in nature. So I decided I had to go in the water. So I've been working on uh, various pedal boats uh, for a while now. This is, I don't even know which art incarnation this is, but Depends on how you calculate it, but somewhere between four to six. Oh, wow. When did you start with a pedal boat? Um, the first pedal boat I made was when I was living in Connecticut and I built a little 16 foot catamaran. Okay. And that went through two different incarnations. First with a recumbent sit down drive with a drive unit. Then when I moved back to Seattle, I brought that with me and put my, my bike mounted on the, the, the deck of that and hooked oh. that up to a drive. And okay. that was really, really successful. Um, it went really well. Um, my daughter was like one year, uh, one or two at the time. And I used to take her, I had the, the bike seat on the bike and I'd take her out in the water <laughs> and we'd go for trips. It was wow. pretty awesome. And then I uh, found out about this guy named Rick Willoughby and he designs pedal boats uh, in Australia. He's kind of the preeminent pedal boat designer in the world. And uh, he, I built one of his boats, a, um, a racing, a stripped down racing version of the boat that I'll show you today. Okay. Uh, and today's, today's boat is a, um, uh, a built up one built for the race to Alaska so that you can, you know, haul gear and sleep aboard and things like that. And then somewhere in there, I also had another pedal power catamaran um, that was more of a cruising catamaran. And then there's just other people's boats I've been helping put drives okay. on. So. In 2015, at the start of the race to Alaska, I remember there, did you have that green boat? So this boat in its first build um, had a green hull. Okay. It had longer white amas and it had the first year it had a sailing rig. Okay. And then I broke one of the connections, one of the cross beams where it can attach to one of the amas uh, okay. out in the straits. Yeah. And then had to kind of limp back home oh okay so just as you were heading towards victoria yeah yeah and then wow. the following year i came back and did just stage one okay. and i um i built new cross beams and left the sailor rig at home and got um, second place in stage one. Oh wow right behind a, a couple of french guys in a carbon fiber uh, racing skull okay right um uh, the other matthew matthew from uh, Lyon. Um, yes bonnier um, yes. And then were you involved in 17, 2017? Um, I don't remember. I'm trying to remember the, 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 each year there. I think it was the, the year after. I remember 2018, you made I've it to it, Nanaimo. I've done it two other times. One other time I did just stage one. And then the other time I was planning on going all the way to Ketchikan. That was the year that I rebuilt um, Roller, my pedal boat. Um, I trimmed. Uh, I brought it from 217 pounds to 150 pounds Wow! by building new amas, new cross beams, basically brought it all the way back down to a, a bare hull and rebuilt it all. And then um, say the name of your boat again. Roller. Roller. Okay. So that's the a French term for an all round cyclist. Okay. Like a cyclist is kind of good at everything, which Got is it. what I was kind of something as a cyclist. And I think of this boat as being kind of that sort of thing, kind of good at everything, but not nice. particularly good at one thing. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. So I spent way too much time rebuilding this boat and making it perfect. 
and not enough time training. Uh, and in my you know, 40 something year old body, it doesn't respond as well as it once did. And I got tendonitis a couple days into oh, to stage geez. two there. Well, I remember I was driving, I was driving the Grand Banks uh, 42 and, and you were out in front uh, in 2018 and um, zipping right along. And then we were following various boats. And then I heard that you had decided that uh, Nanaimo was as far as you were going. And it was kind of, yeah. just kind of sad for you, but. Uh, yeah, it sucked. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't so sad that I didn't make it to Alaska, but I was even mo more sad that I didn't get to uh, make it to Johnstone Strait. Oh, which I really, um, I took a trip there in my rowing boat in the year that my, the other year that the boat broke. Okay. I took a rowing trip, a 160 mile trip through Johnson Strait and down through Seymour Narrows and stuff rowing. Oh, wow. And I was really hopeful to get back to those waters, but. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, great. I, I've, you know, I did 2017 with uh, uh, Ernie Baird on uh, Grace B. And so. Oh, uh, right. Yeah. Yes. Right. So, so I, I joined the club and, um, and then I, the next year I, I had, um, uh, was going to do a, a different boat uh, that then 2019, it was, it ended up uh, being Sea Fourth Expeditions, um, Tom McPherson's yep. boat. And so at 18, it wasn't ready. So then he did that, but um, itching to go back. So um, yeah, I'm really excited to see what you have to have to tell us because um, it's a little bit mysterious to those of us who haven't applied pedal power to boats. And um, it's kind of like, well, how do you do this? And I think there's some manufactured devices out there, but- um, there's, there's quite a few now. Uh, in recent years, there's a bunch of different kayak manufacturers that have pulled out drives. Right. And there were already a few. Um, yeah. There was a, a well-known Chinese drive that people were using. There's the- um, The Hobie Seaside Mirage. Uh, the Hobie Mirage. I'm thinking yeah. of a uh, propeller design specifically, right. but yeah, uh, Sea Cycle was has been the most popular one okay. over the years, um, and now that yeah, now there's a whole bunch. Cool. Well, yours is different than that, though. Yours is a uh, yours is as I mine recall. Is, mine is very different. Okay, it's far more efficient than than the other pedal drives. Okay, but it's also um, more complicated, and and it, you can't just buy it. You know, it takes. It's a lot of work to to get the thing to get all the parts and get it you know functioning well. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, my let's, boat let's... is um, back when my boat was the the max speed that I've done in this boat was when it was weighing 217 pounds and I had about 50 pounds of camping gear on me. Yeah. And on Lake Washington, I sprinted and hit 9.9 .9 miles per hour. Whoa. Whoa. Which is a pretty pretty well for that big a boat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know most folks with the pedal drive, they're applying them to very large boats. Um, so that makes it, uh, I mean, but what impressed me, really struck me was I watched um, Team Sail Like a Girl in 2018 leave Point Hudson at four in the morning and with two women pedaling there too. I, I don't know if, are there sea cycles? Is that what they used on there? I don't know. No, they, they're basically the same configuration as sea cycle. Okay. It's a little, you know, little drive unit prop at the bottom and the propeller at the top, or prop at the bottom and cranks at the top. Yeah. Uh, okay. I don't remember the make that theirs is, but. But I think it is a manufactured uh, one. It is. But yep. I think. Yep. Anyway, I just remember them moving along and out of the harbor very quickly and then talking to them later and they said in flat water they could maintain four knots, which is what Brandon Davis had said he could do with Felix in 2015. And that was an 800 pound boat versus their, you know, lead keel racing boat. Granted, a light lead keel racing boat, but that was yeah, impressive. Yeah, that's a speed for that kind of boat. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I, the the fact that you combined a lightweight boat and um, and pedal drive obviously it makes a lot of sense. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what you got there. How? So I'm going to just turn it over to you and you. You're the teacher, so tell us. Uh, All right, I'll, I'll give you guys a little tour. Uh, so I just pulled my boat off the rack, so uh, it's not fully assembled. Okay. Um, the main thing missing is the cross beams and the amas because okay. it's the trimaran. So I just have the main hull here, yep. and I'll uh, give a quick tour of the boat and then the, the pedal drive. So let me just turn my camera around. Cool. And Here's it, my boat here in my front yard. Oh, wow. Yeah. Just, can you turn your, your, are you on your phone? Yeah. 
I wonder if you can go sideways for kind of a landscape view. See if that'll work. I don't know how to do that without just turning. Just try turning it and see if it will rotate. No? Uh-oh, he froze up. <laughs> Might have asked too much. Are you still there, Matt? I'll, I'll, I'll keep going here. All right, okay, so great. here's my boat. Okay, great. Um, the, it's got a fully enclosed cockpit. You can see the recumbent seat right there. Oh, and that's quite lightweight as well. Uh, yeah. And then uh, the pedal drive, I fully in, kind of enclosed up forward here. Okay. So you're looking at a 84 tooth chain ring there. Okay. And then the cog in the front is, I can't remember, honestly, I think it's a 15. Okay. So uh, the, the chain drive there drives the cog on this miter pack gearbox. Okay. Which is a one to one gearbox. Right. Uh, the other cool thing I put in here, this last build is uh, I put in the centric bottom bracket in there so that I can adjust the chain tension and then I don't have to have an idler. So that keeps the system a little bit more efficient and, uh, and quieter, not having to have a, an idler gear on the chain. So what, what is, show this bracket again, how you're just able to move. I don't know if you can see that. That's an eccentric bottom bracket. So there's oh, gotcha. You right can there. Un un undo that that bolt on the other side, and then you can change its position and change the adjust the ch the chain tension. Got it. The the eccentric where the crank is. Got it. Yep. Nice. So you can see that there is the right angle gearbox, and then there's a little bit of a stub shaft. Uh huh. So here is there here there that is on the other side there. Yep. Where it's, where it's supported with a with a, a bearing. Right. Oh, okay. Yep. And then uh, one second, let me uh, lay this thing down. Oh, All right. So the there's... right angle gear, the, the this whole design is a little strange uh, in that there's basically a really skinny uh, main hull. Yeah. That's, I don't know, maybe 10 inches wide or so. Um, oh. And then a few inches above the water line, it steps out and is then wide enough for a person to sit and um, and you can sleep inside that hole as well. But um, the the main hole is is only ten inches wide. It's super narrow. Wow. Okay, I get it now. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize and that, that allows that allows a spot where that right end gearbox sits out over the edge of the water. Yeah. And that's where the prop shaft comes out. Okay. Yeah. So um, one of the reasons why this particular drive unit is so efficient is that the closer a um, propeller is aligned to the flow of the water, the more efficient it is. Even uh, at a little bit of an angle, it loses a lot of its efficiency. So this is a stainless steel curved shaft. OK. So when there's no load on it, it's obviously straight, right? Right. And then as, as soon as you load the thing up, let me see if I can get in a position here for that. As soon as you load it up, it basically forms a curve. Okay. And so the, the strength of the shaft is designed to be to basically match my strength. Right, because it's pushing. So it's creating that curve because it's pushing forward. Yeah, yeah. So here's the propeller, yeah. which is made by Rick Willoughby. It's a, it's a a feathering prop so the idea oh. is that when you stop pedaling weeds will fall off or they're less likely to get on there i don't know truly how well that actually works okay you get a lot of weeds in the pacific northwest and that's a big problem with the boat sure so yeah, yeah. um what's pretty unique with this boat is you can run it with you can run it with the, the propeller um unattached and when you do that uh when you're not pedaling the prop like it drops down into the water and then as you start pedaling it literally aligns with the flow of the water and has this like perfect curve in it and is fine and it's there's no other attachment i mean you're well, not generally i use generally i use an attachment so i don't have this attached at the moment right here but okay. there's there's a strut that comes down off the there, boat okay that's what i thought yeah and inside that strut there's um 
there's thrust bearings. Oh, okay. So the, so the idea is that when you're at cruising speed, the propeller shaft is basically meeting your strength that you're putting out. Right. And then if you start sprinting, you start putting out more watts than the thing can handle, the propeller shaft will start over bending. It'll start um, bending more than it's supposed to. And that's okay. where the thrust bearings come in with the, with the strut. Okay. So the, the, the front of the propeller will hit those, those thrust bearings and, and stop it from overbending. Okay. And so is that a matter of, has, has Rick Willoughby calculated all this, or is this something a little bit of matter of trial and error that you need to work on? He has definitely calculated it. Yeah, no, he's done a ton of calculations. I mean, he's done also done a ton of trial and error and stuff. Sure, but, sure. Um, and then the other thing that's really cool about this prop setup is uh, let me see if I can show it because it's not fully attached here. So it, it attaches onto the boat right here. Okay. And then it just hinges up. Okay, so you've got some cable or something attached to that to bring it up. No, nope, I don't have anything. Oh, do you just so reach down? I can, and... I can reach over the side of the boat. Okay. Grab on to the propeller shaft okay. and just and just flip it up and then i can reach back to where the propeller is and like pull the seaweed off of it and get it cleared up and stuff like that okay. or if i um okay. if i'm approaching the beach i'll flip it up and i have a my cross beam comes in uh right about here so i usually have a little uh little bungee with a hook hanging down and i can flip it up and attach that to it and then it, it stays out of the water as i'm beaching it or whatever the situation might be wow Wow. Okay. Um, so when well, hmm. so when you were doing the race to Alaska, at least that did the, did you spend one night out when you were up like after Victoria, or did you uh, make it? Two nights out. You did. Okay. Before so you, I spent, before... I spent one night um, aboard the boat on anchor. Okay. And then I spent one night ashore, some, somebody like flagging me down on the beach up by um, that little island, is it Newcastle Island? It's oh island. yeah, outside Nanaimo, Newcastle yeah. Newcastle in protection, Newcastle in protection. Anyway, some, yep. some homeowner was like, I've got this little cottage that I'm remodeling. You wanna crash in there? <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, and so was it your intention to, to go ashore fairly often or was it you were gonna stay anchored out on the boat um, or just, whatever made sense. Um, I did not bring a tent with me. So the, the plan was to spend every night on the boat. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause it seems, I mean, there's some delicacy to, to the propeller rig and, and the boat being light. I don't know how much you would want to, you'd want to find a Sandy beach if you're going to pull the boat out. Um, true. True. I have this little cart that goes underneath the wheels. So like, it's really easy. It's oh, a good. Little, little low cart that I built that's custom made. So anytime I'm going up any beach, rock or sand, I just basically, when it's at the water edge, water's edge, I slip that underneath the boat and then I can roll it around really easily. Oh, okay. I think I saw a uh, picture of you like riding your bike, towing the boat. I, I do. I take my bike and I tow it. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, great. I, live, I live up the hill from Shoshul Marina. Okay. And it's a, it's a nice, coast down the hill with the boat and then a little bit of a slog on the way back up but. sure right wow okay so in terms of like the technology of this the with the, the gearbox was that something you were able to buy or did you manufacture that that's an off-the-shelf product that's an off-the-shelf part okay yeah. and, and the then one i have is, the one i have is a one-to-one -one drive ratio got it which and required then, the the big chain ring okay and then um just getting the, the the design specs from Rick Willoughby, I imagine, although you said you actually got the propeller from him. Is that correct? I got the propeller from him. Uh, he actually made that strut for me. <clears throat> oh, okay. Um, and a couple of other parts as well. Oh, okay. And where is he? You said in Australia? Uh, yeah, he's in uh, uh, Melbourne. Oh, okay, where they had the earthquake. Yeah, and I've and I've never met him, but I have certainly uh, gone back and forth on emails a lot. When I, when this boat was being met, uh, built, yeah. it was uh, it was really a first boat for both of us. Like, oh, um, 
he'd he'd only made like the lower hole before okay um you know with where you're sitting on top of it and you're completely exposed and um he gotcha. hadn't made one this heavy and with a you know with an additional like cockpit area and storage area and right and you had to f the, the the boat design was that largely you then I would say the design was his, but the construction was okay. all me. Because you had to, had you had to have the volume in that that ten inch section enough displacement to to support the rest of the pod up above. Right, right, and he did all those calculations. All the all the all the shape is all him. Oh, okay. okay. I just had to figure out how to make it and make it light enough and strong enough and all okay. that stuff. Okay. So. Wow. Now, so um, is this? The system that you're using is this very similar to what Scott Veer's using on um, on Sea Runner, uh, the yep. small Sea Runner. Yeah. He okay. has a very similar um, the flexible shaft setup that he has is very similar. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then um, our other friend who did the uh, race to Alaska the first year on a Tiki Twenty One, he had the same setup too, and he actually had two drives side by side on his catamaran. Oh, so he had the. Um, the uh, he had a C cycle on one side and the flexible shaft thing on the other side. Oh, and what was his? Uh, what did he? What did he feel about those two? Did he have any uh, feedback about them? Oh, you're going back six years. So I know I'm it was a while ago. I'm forgetting his opinions on those. I mean, I think he thought both of them were certainly useful. Okay. Um, off the top of my head, I remember the. Um, I did the the first stage with him that year. Um, oh, okay. The Rick Willoughby system is a lot smoother. Oh, okay. So, like the the drive units, they tend to be kind of kind of uneven throughout the pedal stroke. Oh, interesting. Okay, uh, is it is it partly because of the bend in the shaft that it, it's a little bit of a shock absorber? I think I think that that's part of it, and I think the gear ratio is a little part of it. Oh, and okay. I don't know which which one plays more, but. Uh, yeah, I, I ask your opinion about this. I was talking with Carl Kruger, who was in the Washington 360 this year, and he was on um, a Millennial Falcon, the, the Melges 24, and he they had the we sat opposite each other with and then two drives. And I haven't talked to the um, the fellow who whose boat that is and what he put together, but they felt that there was a lot of stress on the legs in terms of kind of shock load and the pedaling. Um, and they, he was wondering about the idea of a flywheel. Now, obviously that would add weight, but I'm wondering if you saw any benefit to that. Um, I've wondered about that. Um, no one's ever successfully put one together though a few people have mentioned them. Okay. Um, recently, I saw a guy on YouTube who made a bicycle with a flywheel. Uh huh. And, and I think he was kind of using it more like for acceleration and stuff like that. Hmm. Uh, anyway, it, it, it reinvigorated my idea that maybe it would be worth trying a flywheel. Um, I don't know what kind of weight would uh, would be enough, right? Right. Right. Uh, yeah. But but it, it's certainly interesting. I mean, one of the disadvantages of pedal boats compared to a bicycle is that you can't stop. Right. Like, like on a bicycle, you're kind of constantly varying your cadence a little yeah. higher, a little lower, uh, you know, coasting, you know, kind of briefly coasting very frequently. Yeah. Unless you're, say, going up a climb, right? Right. And, and pedaling a pedal boat is like going up a hill all day long. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's 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 really taxing, I have to say. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like, you you can you obviously can stop pedaling, but you immediately drop your your speed, right? So it's, right, it's, it's it's not encouraged. Well, it's I know I noticed I did the seventy forty eight in two thousand nineteen in a in a single you know one person fixed seat rowboat, and I my day job is I'm an outward bound instructor, so I'm used to being in boats so with like you know you know four to eight people rowing and so you can you know, stop and scratch your nose or take a drink of water put on take off your jacket or something but when you're by yourself you stop the boat stops or if yeah. you stop you know you 
if you go in a circle or something, you know, if you stop one or, yeah. and it's just like, oh, right. <laughs> and of course, the, the advantage same. to a pedal boat, though, is that your hands are free. Right. Oh, that's so true. I've got rope steering in my boat, so I can steer with either hand. Uh -huh. um, and obviously, a lot of the time, I can just go hands free on, on the steering. Right. Um, so when I did the race to Alaska stage one, uh, the one that I got second place in, I crossed the straits with Colin Angus. And he was rowing, yeah. and I was pedaling, and I was right behind him. Uh -huh. um, Tell him which way amazing. to turn. <laughs> yeah. It was amazing how quick he was at, like, eating a banana in, like, half a second, having a sip of water, and, like, back on the oars. Like, he lost almost no time at all. Like Right. He's like, well like practiced. Me, I'm, just, I'm just sitting back there eating whenever I want to eat and drinking right. whenever I want to drink. <laughs> right, right. Well, he, he has the miles. He's practiced quite a bit. He um, has a lot of practice, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I mean, it seems, I mean, part of my fascination with the pedal drive is hands-free. That's part of it. Like if you're by yourself, the steering, that's definitely come across my mind. But also, it just seems to be kind of winning in terms of maintaining that steady, you know, pushing along and and. You know what say like a girl demonstrated i think they they had a similar experience to what we had on grace b in terms of rowing we would say we rowed a third of the way we sailed a third of the way and we rowed and sailed a third of the way um right. and they i think they probably felt about the same in terms of they sailed a third of the way and they pedaled a third of the way and they pedaled and sailed a third of the way and it seems the way this you know the the winds in the northwest are and maybe many places that they drop off enough, enough that if you want to keep going, you got to you know get the human power going. And yeah, um, it's nice to have teammates uh, when you're doing that. Well, that's true. That's true for sure. And <laughs> um, and using the legs, I mean, it, it does seem to make a lot of sense, particularly since we can do more with having our hands free. Um, so I'm I'm interested in that, and I I you know I I mentioned this the reason you know the the idea of the uh, panel. I mentioned it to Barb Trailer who runs the festival, and she's like, "Yeah, that's that's a fantastic idea." I meant, you know, and Daniel, I brought into that conversation as well. It's like, yeah, and they already had a bunch of people lined up to talk about electric drive, but these races that they've put out have really, you know, brought the human power piece, and and particularly the pedal power, seems to be, you know, become much more of a thing. And then, you know, as you're probably well aware, the boats that have gone with like the two tandem bikes. So they have four people pedaling on two propellers that are just, you know, that one was in 2016, it was Jungle Kitty, 44 foot monohull, came in yeah. second place because he had four people pedaling and four other people not pedaling who could then swap in. He had eight people on a crew. So it was, it was interesting to sort of see that overall weight of boat and crew come into play where they could have enough people to just keep the boat moving and what turned out to be, I think, a relatively light wind year. Um, yeah, the lighter yeah. the wind, obviously, the better the human power plays in. Well, right. I mean, that's when Carl Kruger and you are, you know, coming to your own. It's like, oh, those, that's the year that we should really be pushing. <laughs> um, and the, the, the other is that, for it. well, there's that, right. But the other <laughs> is that, you know, this, this idea of could this be viable for people instead of like a you know a little two horsepower motor on their on their dinghy or something? It's like pedal powers that they can hop in and and go. And I don't know if it's going to move to that, but just you know an, an auxiliary for sailboats. I, I think sail a lot, but you're you're also bringing this idea of like, well, this is this standalone is a propulsion for a boat. Let's let's get in some get in a vessel and go. Facing forward, yeah. hands free. Yeah. Well, um, uh, it reminds me of uh, two boats. Uh, Felix would be one. Right. Um, Brandon goes out for for pedals just for the fun of it. Okay. Like he'll he'll occasionally just not sail and just take it out for a a, a pedal. He you know, said, he, yeah, to, and he said he could maintain foot. four knots on a on a flat day. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had a I had a a twenty foot uh, catamaran, uh, probably weighed. 900 pounds or so yeah and i could do a similar i could do a similar speed okay and, and i used to and it had a sailing rig and, and things and some days i would actually a lot of times i would just leave the sailing rig at home right. and go out to pedals 
and I do like a loop over um, Lake Union. And it was pretty funny to to pass kayakers. Yeah. And they look at you like 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 and ask you like if you had a motor or whatever. Like, no, no, I'm just pedaling. And yes, I'm passing you in this big boat. Yeah. And did you have a similar a Willoughby flexible shaft set up on that? No, I had a, I think it was called a Sea Wind drive unit. It was a Chinese made. Okay. It's similar in basic rough design to a sea cycle drive unit, which is basically a twisted chain drive. Okay. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a drive unit, like like all the manufactured ones where the prop, like it looks like an outboard. Right, like bottom, a lower end, yeah. The bottom. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, that's um, one of the people I had for the panel um, was uh, Everard uh, Martens, who did the race in 2019 on a San Juan 30. And he had built a pedal drive and he's a welder um, uh, by training. And so he built this and it was basically a long shaft and he had it was one of these where you sat, it was all mounted on the, on the transom of his sailboat and you sat facing aft and it was, he had a three speed bicycle unit going into it. And he said they, they did play with that a little bit, the gearing, um, but it was, he then loaned that to the team that came in second place in the Washington 360 this year. Okay. Um, and so it's apparently has been re relatively successful. Um, one... I, I was going to mention one other point. Um, sure. The, the bent shaft drive is, when you're going fast, it's definitely the most efficient drive out there. Um, but I think once you're getting into bigger boats, you're, it's not the right system. Why, once why is that? Once you're, well, for one, you'd need to, at some point, at some boat level, you're going to step up into a bigger, a bigger shaft. Okay. And no one has done that before. So you're going to have to like figure that, that whole, that, you know, figure that math all out. Right. So you, so it still bends, but it doesn't bend too much. Right. Right. Because the more you're pushing against, the more stress is going to be on all those components. And sure. it's just not, it's just not designed to handle it. I mean, he originally designed that system for, you know, boats that weighed like whatever, 50 pounds. Right. Okay. Gotcha. What's the so, diameter of the, the, the stainless rod i think it's five sixteenths. oh wow so pretty small yeah yeah um but 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 also there's advantages to the drive units um and if you're not going that fast then the extra like drag in the water of the bigger that bigger thing you know unit is not a problem okay i mean honestly like i think some a boat like felix kind of proves that right if right. he's going four knots on a boat that big there's not that much drag on on the unit that's you know the lower unit that's in the water right but he also pulls it up when he's sailing right yeah yes true true okay. but at, at the speed he's going i don't know what i'm sure uh, rick knows the math on that but i'm not sure what the math is on that but i'm sure at that at, at that speed and lower you're not saving anything by having my skinny little drive in the water right and then you have the additional disadvantages of the system. So what do you mean by that? I'm, 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 I think I lost it when you're saying about the drag and the disadvantage. What do you mean? Well, my drive has very little drag in the water. Right. right. There's right. a 5 16 inch propeller right. and, a prope and, and a propeller. Right. Or pro 5 16 inch shaft and a propeller. Right. So not much. Where the, the lower unit um oh right, right. The units, a there, lot there, of there, there there's a quite quite a bit of uh drag there gotcha gotcha right but and disturbance going, disturbance in front of the prop too yes 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 there are a few systems with polar props but yes def definitely more disturbance but if you're in a bigger boat and you're only going to go you know three knots then it doesn't matter okay gotcha but I'm and trying to it's, think. it's nice to be able to pull with the with the drive units. It's nice how easy they are to pull out of the water, right? To clean right. weeds or things like that. Yeah, yeah. So I I think I've answered a, another question already. Um, one of the things Carl mentioned with the system on uh, the Melgis twenty four, this Millennium Falcon, which was used. Who was that? That was team educated guess, I think in twenty nineteen, and okay. they were not very far behind sail like a girl in the Melges 32. 
but they also broached and crashed a lot of times. Um, but one of the things he mentioned was um, the chain coming off. And I think you've already answered that question by being able to adjust the tension and you know, not having a lot of slop in the chain. Um, and yours, yours is also very close. You don't have a lot of chain. Um, I, don't, I don't have a lot of chain. Yeah. If I had more chain, I'd need you know, guides, idlers, whatever different right. things to keep things in line. And there are some we boats have that have had to have good chain line. Yeah, there are boats that have had some really big chains. Like I'm thinking, uh, Big Broderna had that yeah, big setup and a lot of chain. And so one of the things Carl had brought up is what about going with a belt? And I was wondering if that ever came up in your consideration. Yes and no. So Rick was developing a belt drive system. Okay. Um, and it was beautiful and it was awesome, but it just, he couldn't get the parts made for any oh. kind of reasonable amount of money. Um, the belt drives required a two to one gearbox. Oh, uh, because you couldn't, the, the belt, the components that they had for the belt drives didn't have, um, you know, like big enough cogs, whatever to go with a one to one. Okay. So he manufactured a, 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 a unit with belt drives and then he had this gearbox that he designed himself and was having made um and it worked great but he got like i don't know he had like four of them made or something like that and it at some point there was some hope that they were going to make a run of building these but it, it never came to fruition okay so if that if those parts could ever come those would it would it would change things a lot it's so, so much quieter. It's so much smoother. Um, and part of that smoothness is that it's that much more efficient that you're not having the drag. Okay. Plus so, you have the corrosion issues, right? right? Yeah. So there are, so you do see that there are advantages to going with the belt. If, if you could get all of that, those components and it basically so comes down to the gearing issue. And okay. right now the, the kind of go-to drives for these boats are the miter packs. Their two to one drives are just too weak. Oh, so They're Miter Pack is a is, yeah, that's the brand, right? It's a, that's the brand, yeah. And so the drives are just um. Hang on a second. Sure. What's up? Um. Uh, I'm on a video call. D dinner's ready. Okay, I'll wrap up and come in. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um. That's, that's so yeah. The Miter Packs, uh, the the one to one drive they have is bulletproof. Gotcha. And you can sprint on it you can do whatever you need to do to it and you know that it's going to last you all the way to alaska and nice. it's really really easy to break the two to one drive gotcha okay so um i mean i know plenty of people that have done them and i think the only way you can use a two to one is if you're willing to baby it gotcha and i don't want to be willing to baby it so right understood all right. Well, I should let you go. Thanks so much, Matthew. This is super, super informative for me because I'm definitely uh, know very little. I, I now know a bit more. <laughs> well, really. uh, if you have any follow-up questions, don't hesitate to send me an email. All right. Well, thanks so much. And um, do you do you anticipate uh, jumping into one of these races again? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, I've been it's... very busy with school the last couple of years and just started working again. Okay. Um, and the last event I did was the Salish 100. Oh yeah. And with my daughter. Yeah. And that was so much more pleasant to have my daughter's company. Yeah. And uh, like be on the water a little few less hour, you know, a shorter period of time. Yeah. So I'm really liking those cruises. So I we'll see if I get the motivation to do another race. But gotcha. Um, I remember seeing the for, for sure. But. Yeah, I remember seeing the pictures of the the extra pod hanging underneath the, the crossbeam. Yes, yes. Yeah, I made a sidecar for it and she loves it. Yeah, that, that was fantastic. Everybody loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to seeing it in, per, in person at some time. So yeah, well, if you're if you're around, I'll be on Blake this weekend with it. <laughs> oh, really? Yep. OK, well, enjoy and enjoy your supper and thank you for your time. And um, right. I'll, I'll put this up when I get a moment. All right. Cheers. Good to talk to you. All right. Bye.